Hey guys, Angus here, bringing another Airsoft video today. Today we got a very highly anticipated Airsoft gun review, and the gun we're going to be reviewing is this thing right here. This is ANK's M60 VN, or M60 E1, whichever you prefer to call it. It's a very nice Airsoft replica of the iconic heavy machine gun. And if you're interested in purchasing this gun, after you watch this review, there is a link down below in the description to airsoftstation.com where you can purchase this gun for about $400. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the review of the ANK M60 VN. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the actual review of the ANK M60 VN. First thing, however, I do want to say is that we are going to do in this review is slightly a little bit different, being that uh, such a big gun, so much to talk about. Sorry if the video does drag on a little bit. I do have a lot to talk about on here. Therefore, we're not going to be doing the style with all the editing, switching back and forth. We're going to be doing it a more casual style of review, me just sitting here pointing out everything, not really zooming in, but explaining how everything works and giving you a pretty good review of the AEG. Now, as usual, I'm going to start off by talking about what the gun comes with. I did not bring the packaging of the gun out into the field with me, but the packaging is really nothing spectacular. It's just a flimsy cardboard box with two styrofoam pieces holding the gun together. Uh, the packaging is decent. I can imagine the packaging getting beat up in shipping. However, I think the gun should remain pretty safe inside there. Uh, included with the gun, you do get a couple things. First thing of note would be you get a three-pronged connector. This allows you to override the gun's MOSFET chip. You also get a metal orange M60 style flash hider. Uh, it's meant to replace the M4 plastic orange flash hider on the M60 currently. It doesn't really make any sense to me why they'd make it orange. I don't know why they don't just give you a black M60 flash hider, but they gave you the orange one for some reason. You'll also get a 300 output small type trickle charger. Uh, I didn't use this, I just used a smart charger to charge the battery. This will work fine, but I would recommend you pick up a smart charger from Airsoft Station. It'll work a lot better, charge your batteries more efficiently. You'll get a 9.6, 1200 milliamp small type little mini battery here. Fits inside the gun's box magazine. Again, it's a decent battery. However, I would recommend you uh, pick up a new battery. Most important of all, you do get your ANK M60 VN owner's manual. Despite the fact the manual is poorly translated, it's not the most detailed manual. It actually does uh, give you quite a bit of information on the gun, all the movable parts. It even gives you a brief history of the M60 in the front of the manual. It's actually a manual I do recommend you take a look at, being that it does tell you quite a bit about the gun. So now that we've covered what everything, you know, everything it comes with, let's go ahead and talk about a question I've been getting asked a lot. Is the gun worth the $400 price tag? And the question, is it worth it, is tossed around a lot, but the only way you can truthfully answer that question is if, to you, it is worth it. So only you can really answer that question. To my opinion, the gun's worth it if you're going for a support role, if you're a Vietnam kit enthusiast, or if you're just a lover of the M60. If you're really just getting it to have it and use it in games, unless you're trying to be a support gunner, uh, it's kind of impractical being that it weighs in over 20 pounds, maybe around 25. You do get tired carrying it in a game. So unless you're going for a support role, or like I said, lover of the M60, Vietnam kit, uh, I, I would recommend maybe you go something lighter like a saw from Airsoft Station or something. But the M60 is uh, definitely a cool gun. All right, so moving right ahead, let's go ahead and talk about this gun's external and internal construction. Starting at the front of the AG, we have the gun's plastic orange M4 style flash hider. Looks kind of stupid and ugly on the M60, uh, but that's what you get with the gun. If you were to remove that, you'll reveal your 14 millimeter counterclockwise threads upon which you can mount that orange M60 flash hider or, you know, whatever other uh, type of flash hider you want on there. Your foldable bipod, this is composed of metal, as is your front sight and outer barrel assembly, going along with your inner barrel as well. The gun's heat shield and hand guard here, these are composed of a pretty durable plastic. The actual carry handle is constructed of metal with a rubber grip on it for comfort. The rear flip-up sight is constructed of metal. The actual gun itself, the upper and lower receiver, these are metal. The pistol grip is a textured, solid, durable plastic as is the feed plate and buttstock. These are also made of plastic. The butt pad or shoulder pad on the buttstock, this is composed of metal and it is pretty solid. As for the sling mounts, one located on top of the buttstock and one located on the left side of the weapon, those are metal as well. The box magazine itself is constructed of plastic, however, it's wrapped in a pretty solid and thick OD green cloth. 
One external piece I do want to focus on quite a bit is the gun's metal bolt, which as you can see is missing from the gun's side. Uh, it, I don't know what happened to it. It fell off sometime between last night's shooting test and today's review, but the bolt is metal and as you can see it wasn't obviously wasn't attached too well being that it fell off uh, just from being shot at a target and took, taken out here to do a review of. So be careful with that. Don't be playing around with it too much. I only played around with it maybe four times and obviously that kind of messed with it because it fell off. So be careful with the gun's bolt which really has no function but it is there for the look of the weapon and as you can see it obviously was not solidly attached. So externally, like I said, all the metal pieces on this gun, it is mainly constructed of a solid metal, but the plastic pieces, they are fairly heavy, solid plastic pieces, and they're nothing really cheap that's going to break on you. Like I said, all the external uh, construction there helps this gun weigh in at around 25 pounds, so it's definitely a heavy AEG. Internally, I believe it's a version 6 gearbox. The internals of the gun are decent. They're your A&K internals. I would recommend that when you get the gun, you maybe re-shim it a little bit and take a look inside the gearbox because it does kind of sound a little funky when you shoot it when you get it out of the box. Also, if you want to up your rate of fire, I would say maybe put a new motor in there. The stock A&K motors aren't too good on really any of the support weapons you pick up, including the saws. So you may want to change that a little bit. Accuracy-wise, the long inner barrel it's pretty good. You do get some decent accuracy up to maybe 120, 130 feet. So really internals on the gun, they're pretty decent, but like I said, you, you probably want to reshim it a little bit, do some stuff to it because it's decent quality, but you, you should probably take a look into it. All right, so now that we've discussed the weapon's internal and external construction, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the gun's features, most notably its movable parts, being that there are quite a few of them on this AEG. Now the first feature we're going to be taking a look at is one of the gun's most obvious. It's the weapon's metal foldable bipod. As you can see, the bipod currently in the down position where you'll be shooting prone. However, it is foldable so that it's upright. In order to fold it, pull downward and the leg will swing upward. This does work for both legs. One thing I do not care for when the bipod is up is that it does swing around on the barrel. This is nice because it allows you to swivel the gun when you're in the prone position. However, when all the legs are up and it's swinging around, it does kind of get annoying. And as you can hear, it does give you a little bit of a squeak. Another thing about the bipod is that the legs are extendable. By pushing in this button here, the leg will go down to that far, as you can see, which will allow you to raise your barrel up like so. So the legs are extendable and the bipod is foldable. It is a nice metal bipod. The legs are pretty solid on there. It's nothing that's gonna suddenly go snap and the barrel is going to hit the ground. It's a solid bipod and it definitely is a nice feature to have on a support weapon when you're laying prone. Now moving directly down from the bipod onto some more movable parts would be the barrel. If you wanted to remove the barrel, you would simply turn this piece here counterclockwise, means swinging it forward, and at that point you can slide your barrel assembly or hop up all of that out. This also allows you to work on the gun's MOSFET if you wanted to disconnect it or put that connector in there. In order to adjust the rate of fire when the barrel assembly is on, simply turn this piece on the end of the barrel assembly and that will cause your MOSFET to either turn up or down, increasing or decreasing your rate of fire. So taking the barrel assembly out that way, this gun is extremely easy to disassemble. Since we just talked about how to remove the barrel, we might as well talk about how to remove the gearbox and the buttstock. The buttstock is removable. You can simply pull it off with a couple pieces popped out and at that point your gearbox will slide out of the gun as well, making this gun pretty easy to work on and in the field if you really need to strip it down, it shouldn't be too much of a trouble. Another movable part on the gun would be the weapon's carrying handle. I do have quite a few to, bit to say about this. As you can see, it does fold to either side, left or right, but when you're carrying the gun you want to have it upward like so. As you can see, it is rather loose and wiggly. I would recommend that after every game or after every time you carry it out, because really you're most likely going to be carrying the gun by the carrying handle, you do adjust these two screws so they don't become too loose. And when you pick it up, the carry handle snaps off and the gun plunks to the ground. Another thing to point out about the carry handle is it seems that the rubber is beginning to rip off slightly at the end where it is kind of sticking off the rest of the metal and when you would pull upward it pinches causing the metal to shoot through the bottom of it so be careful with that that you don't kind of mess up the carry handle and also don't snap it off make sure you do tighten those screws but the carry handle is a definite pro I'd much rather be carrying my AEG like this than having to pick it up and walk around like this 
So I do enjoy the carry handle there and also the fact that it is foldable to either side. Moving just behind the gun's movable carrying handle, you have another movable piece, which would be the weapon's rear sight. The rear sight does stand upright in this position, however, it does also flip down like so. It is adjustable for both elevation and windage. In order to adjust the sight's elevation, simply give this gear a turn. As you can see, the main sight here will move up and down. It is an open hole aperture that you would aim up with your front sight. If you wanted to adjust the sight's windage, there is a large gear located on the left side of the gun that you would turn, and as you can see, the sight will move from left to right depending on how you want to adjust it. So the rear iron sight, it is decent. Really, I wouldn't put a scope on here. The iron sights are fine, and this one does work rather well. It does line up with the gun's front sight, which, as you can see, is just your usual triangle-style sight. Now, moving farther behind the gun's iron sights, we have another movable piece, this being the weapon's feed plate. Now, in order to pop this up, you simply want to give this small little switch here and a slight little twitch and lift upward. As you can see, the feed plate will raise up like so. This is where you would place your fake dummy belt, which would add a nice little uh, look to the gun. If you wanted to place one on, you'd place it here as where it would go on the real AG. You also do get a glimpse of your gearbox, and I'll shift this forward a little bit so you can see. Right here, you do have your metal hop-up. The hop-up gear itself is actually metal, unlike air, most Airsoft AGs where it's a small, easy-to-turn plastic hop-up dial. This one is composed of metal, and it's rather hard to turn. It's very stiff. I can only get it a slight little bit off of the off position, and then I really can't get it to turn anymore. Uh, I found the hop-up to be decent, and it adds a couple feet to the range. There's really nothing spectacular, uh, mainly due to the fact that it's rather hard to turn. It might just be because I have no fingernails, but it is rather hard to turn. However, being that it's rather easy to access by simply popping up the feed plate. The next movable part on the gun, once you lock the feed plate back in place, would be the gun's shoulder rest, which pops off of the butt stock. Just simply flip it up like so. This is meant to go on top of your shoulder when you have the weapon raised and into your shoulder. That rests on top, gives you a slight little bit of uh, more steadiness when aiming. You don't have to use it. You can keep it flipped down. It is textured, so it does help add a little bit of grip to your shoulder. But frankly, I found it pretty comfortable resting on top of my shoulder. One feature that is kind of hard to see from afar that I figured I'd point out would be the gun's fire selector switch, which is located on the left side of the pistol grip, actually. The gun only fires full auto, so there is no semi-automatic setting. It's simply that dial between the S and the F, the S standing for safety, in which the trigger cannot be pulled, and when you flip it up to the F, the gun is on full auto, which it'll be firing, uh, whichever rate of fire you want, being that you would adjust your MOSFET. All right, so now that I've covered pretty much all of the features on the actual AG itself, there is one thing I still have not talked about at all, and that is the gun's included 3,500 round auto winding box magazine. Now, as mentioned earlier, the box magazine itself is constructed of plastic with a couple metal pieces on it, and it is covered in a nice, thick, solid OD green cloth, which I believe is lined with some form of maybe a cardboard type of material that uh, keeps it rather solid and firm on the box magazine. Now, the box magazine does not only hold your BBs, it also holds your battery. In order to put the battery in, this one will fit fine. This means you can probably fit some Butterfly or some Nunchucks batteries in there as well, but nothing really thicker than this. Simply slip it down onto the left side of the box mag. It'll slip down like so, and at that point, you can connect your battery to the wire sticking out of the gun. Again, it is a small type battery. Now, the box magazine, in order to load BBs upward, you would flip this open like so and this will reveal your reservoir of BBs. You can fill it up with 3,500 rounds and once it's filled up you do want to connect two wires into the side of the gun. First being these small chips right here and the other one being the gun's BB hose which feeds the BBs into the AEG to fire which is located just next to the box magazine. Again this will all be much if you're confused about it it'll all be explained inside the M60's manual. But the box magazine is auto winding, meaning it'll just continue to shoot. You don't even have to touch it. Just fill it up with BBs, pull the trigger, and it will fire. And really what's uh, cool about that is just being, it really adds a support weapon style where you can just hold down the trigger, which is something I did forget to mention. 
the gun can take a pretty good amount of stress, more than your typical AEG, so you don't really have to worry about only taking short bursts. You can take a burst on this gun slightly longer than the average AEG and really become a support gunner with that longer trigger pull and with the auto winding box magazine. The box magazine, I only had two issues where it didn't want to feed, and uh, when it didn't want to feed, it will make sort of a, you know, er, 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 your kind of grinding sound you get with some of your other auto winding mags. And in order to resolve that problem, I shook it a little bit, or I just gave the box mag a little tap, and at that point, it began to feed again, and the BBs began to cycle out through the gun. Really, the box magazine is a nice touch to this gun. They definitely made some improvements over their old box magazines. From what I've heard, this is a lot better than the old ones they used to give out with the M60, so it's definitely a nice touch to the AEG. Now, moving on from the box magazine, we really only have one last thing to point out before we get into the final conclusion, that being the gun's sling mounts, one located on top of the buttstock and the other one located on the left side of the gun on the plastic heat shield. Uh, the sling mounts, they're there. I really don't see why you'd put this on a sling. Uh, if you did put it on a sling, make sure it's a good quality sling that's going to be able to hold 25 pounds. Uh, that being said, also make sure it's a comfortable sling that's not going to be slicing into you as this gun dangles at your side. But really, I don't see too big of a point for putting this on a sling. Uh, you'd much be better off just carrying, around, carrying it around on the battlefield. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get the final conclusion of the ANCAM 60 VN review. Hopefully this review is not drug on too long. The M60VN is an extremely nice airsoft AEG. It does have its faults, however. Uh, one big one, of course, being that bolt. I don't even know what happened to the bolt or the charging handle, whichever you prefer to call it. Just kind of fell off. Only played with it once or twice. Carrying handle begins to get loose after a while, so make sure you keep an eye on those screws. You don't want to pick it up and have it snap off in your hands. Internals could use a checkup, you know, being that they could use some reshimming. The ANK stock internals aren't the greatest. And really, Honestly, that's, that's truthfully about it. The gun's a pretty solid AG. External construction's very, very nice. Heavy weight to it, 25 pounds. If you're someone who wants a pretty realistic gun, Vietnam enthusiast, ANK's M60VN, they really do produce a nice one. The auto winding box mag is a nice touch. I like how they included it. You didn't have to buy it separate. That's always nice. And really, there's not much I can say about it. When you look at it, it's just a badass gun, and that's what it is. It is just a gun that is truthfully a monster. If you're someone who wants the intimidation factor, who's not going to be terrified when they see an M60 on the field? Especially one that's shooting roughly around the 700 rounds per minute area and just blasting BBs downrange. This is an effective AEG. Passing the features test, it has a lot of nice features on here. Foldable bipod, very nice to have. You got your movable feed plate where you can put a nice dummy belt. The sights are decent on it. Fire selector switch, sling mount carry handle, movable outer barrel assembly with the MOSFET. It's a nice airsoft AEG. Is it worth it? Again, you have to ask yourself that question. For me, it's worth it because it's such a cool gun and I'd love to have it on display, but you know, maybe some people it's not their cup of tea, the whole support role, which is really what this gun is designed for. If I were you, grab it, reshim it a little bit, maybe put a new motor in it and you'll have a heck of a nice support weapon. So with that being said, guys, this has been Deathquare Airsoft's review of the ANK M60 VN Airsoft AEG. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe.